What's up everyone, Freedom of Fantasy here from Holistic Songwriting. Welcome to the Artist Series. Today we're continuing in our series of the top 100 songs of all time, according to Rolling Stone magazine. And uh, today's song is going to be Jerry Lee Lewis's Great Balls of Fire. This is great, this is great balls of fire. Another historic song um, that has made a big, big impact when it first came out. Um, there's a couple of reasons why this is such an important song. It kind of introduced the piano as a rock and roll instrument to the world. Uh, before that, the rock and roll instrument was obviously the guitar. And so now for the very first time, someone beating the shit out of their piano, that was something new that people hadn't really seen before. And Jerry was a really frenetic kind of player, jumping around on the piano, playing with his foot, of all things, and there goes the story that he jumped up on his on his piano and lit it on fire. You know, there's all these stories. You know, I'll leave it to you to believe whether that's true or not, but there's those stories for sure. It's quite unusual to have such a stripped down arrangement, and it shows that the, the producers understood what the core thing of this whole song is, and that really stripped down, stripping it down to the very essential parts of it um, was the best way to go. And history showed that uh, they were right. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain Too much of love drives a man insane So one of the first things we hear about the song is when it comes on, it starts with just a few hits and Jerry singing his melody over that. Now this is something we've heard in Chuck Berry's Roll Over Beethoven before, a video which I'll link to up here. Basically we have a pickup phrase, but the pickup phrase goes over the first four bars of the structure. So. Um, it's a little bit different than how we're used to using pickup phrases today. Like if, if I were to write a song today, I would probably write an additional four bars that come before the actual song starts. What we have in these kind of songs is that the that these pickup phrases, I don't really know what to call them. I guess they're they're just the, the intro, the opening kind of line of the song, that those happen over the first four bars of the structure. So instead of having it pasted uh, at the top of the of the score, it's already in there. Does that make sense? So this is quite unusual, I think. It's something I, I've personally never done with my songs. So listening to that again, I mean, I obviously I'd heard it in, in Chuck Berry's song before, um, just made me realize, you know what? Why, why don't we do that anymore? It's kind of an interesting uh, thing to do. And it's a very attention-grabbing attention, attention grabbing thing as well, because we start with uh, hits immediately. Um, it's, it just, it, it draws a lot of attention to itself because it is so rhythmical. It's so out there. You broke my will, a blood of thrill. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. I let you love what I thought it was fine. You came along and you blew my heart in uh, next on my list here is uh, structure, which I think is also quite interesting because we essentially have a blues here or it sounds very bluesy. But when we look at the chords, it's not really blues. I mean, it's not a 12 bar blues at all. The chord progression here is a one, four, five, four, one. And then we repeat that once. And then we go to a four, one, four, five, five, five. So we end on a six bar line, really. So that's quite unusual. We, we use the exact same chords as in a blues progression. And we even use the seventh chords. Uh, we even have a nine chord in, in terms of when we look at the, the four chord, that's an F9. So the whole song is in C major, I should probably say. Um, so there's, we still definitely have a blues feel to all of this. It's just a, a little bit of a different structure. And it just kind of, uh, this is something we saw quite a lot in those days is that uh, people got tired of hearing the same, you know, 12 bar chord progression. So they people just mixed it up and they just kind of took those chords and just threw them together in a slightly different way. And boom, you got yourself a new song. You came along and you honey. I've changed my mind. This world is fine. Great balls of fire. Stylistically, we have a boogie woogie here, which you can tell from the pattern in the left hand of the piano. Now, the typical boogie woogie, woogie pattern is a da 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 da. So it's a one three five six flat seven six five three, right? And then we just take that and apply it to the different chords. So for the four, we'd go da 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 da, and then for the five da 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 da. So we use that same pattern over the different chords of the blues chord progression. Feels good. Oh, baby. Well, 
not gonna love the show. What's interesting about Jerry Lee Lewis's version of this pattern is that he plays something a little bit different. Essentially, he omits the flat seven. So instead of playing one, three, five, six, flat seven, six, five, three, he plays a one, three, five, six, a one, three, five, six. And he adds a little bit of a ghost note in there. I think that's what it, what he does. I'm not 100% sure. It's a little bit hard to hear. Uh, I think what he plays actually is one, three, five, six, five, one, three, five, six, five. So. Yeah, he's taken out that flat seven. It's a blue note, really, right? So it's a very African-American note as well. If we want to draw a line between those two cultures, which I think makes sense during those times, um, there's definitely a difference between how white people wrote music and how black people wrote music. And of course, there was a lot of uh, crossovers and people, you know, uh, got inspired from, from all sorts of musicians. But you can definitely tell that he kind of shied away from this more challenging, more jazzy note, right? So uh, unlike someone like, say, Jimmy Reed, who'd always kind of play the seven, where that was an essential part of his toolbox, uh, he or Jerry Lewis kind of plays with the six more so than the flat seven. And the flat seven is really like, it's the blue note. It's the note that you will hear in all blues songs. So he just kind of took that and made it a little bit neater, a little bit nicer, a little bit wider, right? So kind of whitewashed it, so to say. So in the chords, we still get those flat sevens. Um, so this is something that just pertains to these patterns in the left hand. Um, so the chords that he plays in the right hand, he plays different voicings of those uh, three chords of the C, F, and G. Uh, he plays a C, E, and G. So that's just root position uh, of the C major chord. He plays an F9, which he plays as an A, E flat, and G. So uh, that's a nice wide open voicing. And then he plays a G, which he plays uh, B, F, and G. So he emits the fifth. Uh, and again, in the F9, we have an E flat. So that's the seven of that chord. And in the G, we have the F, which is the seven of that chord. Uh, and also, I should say, during the solo part of the song, um, Jerry kind of adds a flat seven in the left hand. Uh, maybe we should listen to that right now. Did you hear that? So he plays da 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 da. Did you hear that? Like the da. We got that chromatic little thing there, which is what gives the flat seven so much tension, of course. So we have a one one three five flat seven six seven. So flat seven, of course. Um, so there you have that really blue kind of jazzy note in there. Uh, so it's not like he doesn't use it at all. It's just that his typical pattern, uh, you know, kind of omits that note. Um, Good. Another thing that's quite typical for this kind of genre and really anything that's blues related is playing with the minor third in a major key. So we are in C major, but it's very typical to then use that blue note, the minor third. So in this case, the E flat, right? And pretty much any time uh, Jerry plays an E with an, an, in, in the C major chord, he will preface it by playing an E flat, kind of as an appoggiatura, moving towards that note, like the bang, 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 you know, what on guitar we do with like a, a sort of like a bend, he just does that with a dang, dang, playing those notes in quick succession. So that's something that's very typical for the genre, and we don't just see it in the chords, we also see it in the melody. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much of love drives a man insane. We're pretty much starting out with a one note melody on the E flat, so on the minor third of the C major chord, um, which is quite cool because we have an actual C major in the right hand of the piano, and at the same time, we're hearing that E flat. So there's a lot of tension between these two notes because those two notes should not be in the same song together, but that's exactly what ma makes blues so great. So um, then, as we're moving towards the F, uh, we're kind of staying on that E flat, kind of playing around with that, kind of moving down to the C a little bit, but kind of staying on that E flat. Really, it's kind of still a one note melody at this point. You broke my will, a blood of three. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. I'll have you love what I thought it was mine. As we're moving on to the G, that's when the E flat would become kind of a problem because it would be a flat 13 over this chord, which is a very, very tense note. So here, we're moving down the melody to a D. Um, 
And so, by the way, a flat 13 is not unheard of in, in, in blues music. It's just like for, for this, a little bit cleaner version of blues, um, we're probably gonna dissolve that into something a little bit nicer. So here, Jerry dissolves that to a D, which is just the fifth of the G chord. So that's a very um, resonant, very beautiful note, so to say. And then when we go back to the F chord, uh, what we have here is we go back to the C, which is a fifth of the, of the F chord, and then we end on the one, and there we have a bunch of more um, blue notes. It starts on the E flat, going down to a B flat, which again is the seven, uh, then the one, flat seven, and then up top, that high note. The great balls of fire, right? Uh, to a C. So uh, that's the, the tonic, of the, the or the one in the key, I should say. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's really all I had to say about the song. Again, it's not a very complicated song, but it is um, a cool one. I think the mo the main thing about the song that makes this song comes to come to life is really Jerry's performance of it. If you've ever seen him perform it live, he's absolutely incredible. Just going to you know going all at it, throwing all of his emotion and energy at the song, and I think that's ultimately what made it so famous because. This was something people had never seen. Treating this instrument that had been used in, you know, Mozart and, you know, Bach had used it and written these beautiful sonatas and, and operas. And now we have someone who literally plays it with their foot or lights it on fire, whether that's true or not, regardless. Um, but really, it's like, it's this whole thing that we talked about with uh, Chuck Berry as well. It's this whole thing of disrespecting all of this culture, kind of, and saying like, no, this is the new thing. And it's a, it's a protest against all of that, in a sense. There was a little bit of a controversy um, pertaining to the lyrics. Great Balls of Fire apparently has something to do with some line in the Bible. Uh, I couldn't really find anything in the lyrics that would pertain to that. Um, so I think it's kind of a loose argument. Um, Jerry himself, I think, was worried about the song being sacrilegious. Um, as far as I can tell, it's really just a love song that's kind of saying like, hey, I'm super excited. Uh, and Great Balls of Fire is just, just like some, saying like, buy Merlin's beard. It's like a just a way to proclaim how excited you are or how, um, yeah, how excited you are about something. In this case, they're just excited about this woman. It's basically just a love song. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this and you want more, you can always sign up to Patreon where you can ask me questions or get feedback on your songs that I give in a weekly live stream. Uh, also, for more, you can always check out the description for uh, the welcome package if you sign up to our mailing list. Uh, and you're gonna get a bunch of cool stuff, which you can, you know, check that out in the description. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and stay gefährlich.